Despite swearing eternal love and becoming husband and wife, my marriage to him turned into a living nightmare for me. His parents, who doted on my husband excessively, and a husband who always put his parents before me, they treated me like a convenience, dumping unreasonable demands on me. There was no way I was going to let these people ruin my life. I teach them all our lessons. I planned a little surprise. My name is Chloe, and I'm 29 years old. I married Jack, and it's already been a year. We both work at the same company, so we often work together. For the record, I only have a high school diploma, while he has a college degree. But since I have been with the company longer, I'm technically his senior. Our company values performance over educational background, so despite only having a high school diploma, I earn a decent salary thanks to my good sales record. On the other hand, Jack is also competent at his job and well respected, making him a boyfriend I was proud of. I was drawn to him more and more. And happily accepted his proposal, becoming his wife. That's when his parents started meddling in our relationship. One day, when we visited his parents, Lori, his mother, suddenly said to him, "Hey, Jack, are you really okay with this? With what? Marrying Chloe. You've always been good at everything." From academics to sport, and yet you chose someone ordinary like her. His father, Roger, agreed, nodding. Yeah, she seems pretty average. Nothing special about her. Oh, that. It's fine. I love her. Well, if you are okay with it, Lori said, glancing at me. Sorry for being so ordinary. I've worked hard too, you know. I fumed internally, but never voiced my frustrations. To maintain a peaceful marriage, I wanted to avoid conflict with them as much as possible. On another day, they started complaining in front of me again. Hey, Jack, are you really okay with your current job? Yes. The place employs people with just a high school diploma, like Chloe, right? But the pay is good, and I have friends there. You're not the type to settle for a job like that, though, are you? Exactly. You are smart. There must be better opportunities out there. They advised him, glancing at me now and then. I chose not to react, though I was seething inside. What kind of way is that to talk? I'm doing my job well, and my education doesn't make a difference in my work. Sometimes I even earn more than him. It's clear I don't have a good impression of my in-laws, who judge people by education and appearances. However, they haven't physically harassed me, and the direct harm has been minimal. I had informed Jack about my education beforehand, and he had said, "I love you, all of you." I take pride in my work performance, which is valued more than educational background at our company. I never doubted that he was on my side, no matter what his parents said. Then one day, Jack suddenly announced something unbelievable. "I've been thinking." And I've decided to look for a new job. What? Why all of a sudden? I talk it over with my parents. Our company hires high school grads like you. I have a college degree, so there must be higher level jobs out there for me. Are you serious? You are looking down on both me and our company. But it's true. I don't need to do a job that a high school grad can do. Plus, my mom has a connection who can introduce me to a job. Cut it out! 
We are lucky to have such a good work environment. And now you want to change that? Shut up. I've realized it. I'm not meant to end up like this. This was a result of his parents influencing him. He had absorbed everything they said, convinced he was too good for his current situation. The next day, without discussing it with me, he submitted his resignation and easily left the company where we had met. It's been barely a year since we got married. He quickly found a new job at a factory through his mother's connection, where his salary was cut in half. The only upside was that it was closer to home, making the commute easier. About a week into his new job, he started complaining about the factory. That guy, he's just a middle school grad, but still acts all high and mighty over me. He vented loudly, scattering his clothes around. I intervened. Why are you so angry? Don't yell like that. The neighbors can hear you. Shut up. Why should I, a college grad, have to take orders from a bottom rank middle school boss? That's what happens when you start working at a new place. He's your boss after all. I don't care. He has no right to boss me around without any proper education himself. That asshole. Who is the real asshole here? You just started. And you expect to work without any guidance? You chose to switch jobs, so show some patience. I know, I know. Can he really keep going in his current job? How long before he throws in the towel? But any attempt I make to address it only seems to worsen his mood. It's been a struggle to get him to go to work every day without a fuss. My bad feeling turned out to be right on the mark. One day, he caused a major problem at work. You destroy a machine at the factory? I was shocked, and he slammed his hand on the table in response. It's not my fault. The damn boss who pissed me off is to blame. Even so, you can't just go around breaking machinery at the factory. What were you thinking? I had no choice. He was bossing me around. Me, a college grad. It started when a middle school grad supervisor at work reprimanded my husband for not working properly. In response, my husband insulted the supervisor's education. Clearly, my husband was at fault, and everyone present seems to side with the supervisor. Angered by this, he went on a rampage. After causing chaos, he damaged a part of a conveyor belt, stopping the line work. This led to him being fired, and on top of that, being sued for a large sum in damages. Since it was a factory owned by a friend of his parents, my husband and them ended up having to pay for the damages. As a result, not only my husband's savings, but also his parents' retirement savings were wiped out in an instant. So yeah, my parents are struggling financially now. That's why they will be moving into our apartment starting next week. I let out a bewildered cry at his words. Moving in? I didn't agree to this. You're my wife, just as you were told. But... This is final. Got it? With that, he stormed out of the room. A few days later, his parents really moved into our home. I thought it was a joke, but I guess it wasn't. Living together was out of the question. I couldn't overlook this and confronted them directly. Lori, Roger, I can't have you living here with us. Quiet! It's partly your fault our son didn't do well at the factory. Exactly! You neglected to care for his mental well-being. Wait! Wait a minute! How is this my fault? Be quiet! 
Our lives are a mess because of you. That's right. If you had done your part, this wouldn't have happened. It's all your fault. So living together is only natural, right? What? That makes no sense. I can't live with you. Quiet. Our family home is rented, and we are already terminated the lease. We have nowhere else to go. That's right. We have nowhere else to go but here. Despite imposing themselves on us without permission, they said whatever they wanted. Moreover, my husband joined in berating me. Hey, Chloe, I married you. You should feel lucky to have married someone as outstanding as me. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Can you just find a job quickly? Living together is putting a strain on our finances. What? You're too cheeky for a wife. Supporting your family is your duty. Supporting his family is also your duty. Every day, my frustration with his convenient interpretations grows, and neither he nor his parents bother to help with household chores. I have my own job to do. I can't manage to cook elaborate meals, and cleaning inevitably gets neglected. No matter what they say, I keep my responses cool, citing financial difficulties. If they are unhappy, they should deal with the mess they created. After maintaining this stance for several days, my husband finally vented his frustration. What's with your attitude lately? You are lacking respect for me and my parents. Enough! I work every day. And do the housework on top of that. Don't you dare complain when you don't help out at all. Who do you think you are talking like that to me? You don't understand your place. That's when he thrust a divorce paper in front of me, already signed. What's this? Can't you see? It's a divorce paper. Even a high school grad should understand that. Are you serious? Damn right I am. If you have complaints about me or my parents, divorce is the answer," he said triumphantly, as if he had won. Just so you know, throwing it away is pointless. I have more prepared. If you don't want to be divorced, just quietly do as you are told. You ungrateful high school grad wife. In that moment. My anger erupted. I couldn't stand to be with them any longer. Since it was so kindly prepared, I will make good use of this divorce paper. Clutching the divorce paper, I began plotting my revenge. First, I recorded all the insults my husband and in-laws hurled at me with a voice recorder. I also gathered evidence when my personal belongings were deliberately damaged. By this time, my husband had started taking temporary jobs, none lasting more than a week. It was as if he had abandoned our family already. One day, as soon as my husband came home, he said, "Uh, I quit my job again because it was too boring." Again? You have no right to criticize me, right, Mom, Dad? They just smiled and nodded. This was usual, but Roger added the final blow that day. By the way, I quit my job too. What? What did you do, Roger? I said I've quit my job. From now on, Chloe, we are counting on you to support us. What? Our son is too proud to walk under middle or high school grass because he's so talented. We are counting on you, a high school grad. That's right. It's up to you, with your lower education, to work hard. What are they talking about? They accept their daughter-in-law, not their son, to support them. My patience finally snapped with my husband and his father. Quitting their jobs simultaneously. 
Is that so? Understood. Spending any more time with this family was a waste. I decided to put all my plans into action. The first thing I did was sign a lease for a new apartment. Of course, it wasn't for all of us to move. It was for me alone to use as my new home. However, moving out without my husband's family noticing would take some time. To create time for packing, I gifted them a five-day trip. When I handed them a travel ticket, Lori beamed with joy. A trip? Well, well, you can be thoughtful sometimes. I always appreciate everything you do for me. But are you sure? You can join us if you like. No, I have work, and I thought you'd enjoy some family time together. Oh, really? Well, well, we'll take you up on that offer then. Once they left for their trip in high spirits, I executed my planned move. During their absence, I shipped their belongings to a weekly rental apartment and canceled our current apartment's lease. Of course, I bore all these expenses. It was a lot, but I consider it necessary for my revenge. A few days later, presumably after returning from their trip, Jack called me. Hey, what's going on? The key won't work. Smirking at his panicked voice, I calmly responded. That would be because I've canceled a lease on that apartment. Canceled? What are you talking about? Explain yourself. For now, I've stored your family's belongings in a nearby weekly rental. Feel free to do as you please. What do you mean? You're always doing whatever you want. You will regret this if you keep it up. Is that a threat? Should I call the police? He retorted. You ungrateful wife! To which I revealed an important fact. Oh? But I haven't been your wife for a while now. Huh? I made sure to finalize our divorce proceeding first to avoid any legal issues later. What? When does this happen? You think you can just do whatever you want? I took a deep breath and spat at my phone with all my might. Sorry, but I don't need your damn permission. After all the times you've looked down on me for being just a high school grad, and to top it off, quitting your job to become a stupid temp worker? I'm done with you all. Go enjoy your miserable lives together as a family of three. Hey, you're joking, right? I never actually wanted a divorce. Huh, why should I listen to you now? We are strangers, and whatever happened to you guys is none of my business. Please, wait. You've enjoyed mocking me till now. Now it's my turn to mock you guys. I can easily picture your struggles, and it's hilarious. Enjoy hitting rock bottom together, you jerks. With that, I hung up immediately. Jack kept calling, but I ignored all his calls. Later, he and his parents caused a scene at the apartment entrance, significantly damaging a part of the mailbox. This resulted in police involvement and they were all taken away. Eventually, they were charged for the damage to the mailbox, incurring new debts. Truly, a hopeless family to the end. The lease for the weekly rental where I sent their belongings is about to expire. They don't know where my new home is, so they can't turn to me for help. Jack and Roger quit their jobs at the same time and with Lori being a stay-at-home wife. It's hard to imagine how they will survive, especially since Lori and Roger have also canceled the lease on their rental home. It's as if I can see them sinking deeper into a bottomless swamp. I can't help but admire how well my plan worked. I don't know and don't care how they will live from now on.
but it's certain their future isn't bright. They brought this upon themselves. As for me, I'm living freely and comfortably in my new place, enjoying my time without anyone's interference. It's highly unlikely I will live with someone again anytime soon. From now on, I plan to enjoy my own time to the fullest. My husband favors my twin sister. Wish I married her instead. Sister, poor you. I hit my limit. Let's divorce then. After I got married, my twin sister Tracy often visited our new home. She and my husband Levi quickly became close, eventually leading him to prioritize her. One day, after Tracy arrived and had a lively chat with Levi, she said, "We really click, Levi. I have so much fun talking to you." Levi responded, "I have a blast talking to you too." Then, glancing at me, Levi said, "I wish I had married Tracy, given how well we get along." Tracy smirked at me and said. Stop it! You're going to make my sister feel bad. That was the last straw for me. I couldn't forgive my husband for prioritizing her over me and making such a remark. I also couldn't forgive my sister. I calmly stated, "Then let's get a divorce." Levi, shocked, said, "What?" Tracy was also frozen. Come on, you're joking, right? What are you talking about? I left my panicked husband and sister and walked away. They would soon find themselves in a world of trouble. My name is Tina Greenwood, a 28-year-old housewife. In our family, my father ran his own company, and my mother was a homemaker. I have a twin sister, Tracy. Despite his busy schedule, my father always showed us love, and I believe my mother treated us equally. You might think twins would be close, but I've always had a hard time getting along with Tracy. Unlike me, who resembles our father in his plane, Tracy looks like our mother and is dazzling, almost doll-like. She was charming, or perhaps just knew how to ingratiate herself with adults. Although I was better at academics and often praised for it, Tracy's cuteness alone earned her admiration. She once told me. Sis, you have to work hard to be recognized, huh? I just smile, and everyone loves me. She looked down on me at times and wanted everything that was mine. No, I wanted the blue bike too. Tracy complained. When our father reminded her she had said she wanted the pink one, she threw a tantrum. I ended up giving in to her many times. My parents did care for me. But I couldn't help feeling uneasy about my selfish sister. Our paths diverged after high school. I went to a competitive school, and Tracy attended a private school for girls. She would say, "Your school is full of nerdy glasses-wearing students. I'm going to enjoy my high school life to the fullest. But that suits you, I guess." I just brushed off her comments. Later, I went to a national university and passed the certified tax accountant exam during my studies. After graduation, I worked for a major tax accounting firm. Tracy, after finishing junior college without a job, ended up working as a clerk in our father's company. I moved out and was relieved to have less interaction with her. Midway through my twenties, I found myself without a boyfriend. That's when a friend introduced me to Levi at a mixer. He worked as a salesman for a small company, and we hit it off over our shared taste in music. Before long, he asked me out, and we started dating. Our relationship was peaceful, without any significant arguments. On our two-year anniversary, Levi proposed, saying, "Tina, I love how you are so kind and hardworking." Will you marry me? I happily accepted with, "Thank you, Levi. I'd love to." We got engaged and received his parents' blessing for our marriage. Next was my family's turn. 
I was a bit uneasy about seeing Tracy after a long time, but I didn't think she would do anything stupid during our get together. My parents welcomed us with open arms. When Levi earnestly asked for their blessing to marry me, they were delighted. Take good care of her, my father said, nodding to Levi. While we were enjoying this happy moment, Tracy suddenly complimented Levi. You're really handsome, aren't you? Indeed, he's often praised for his looks to the point where I feel he's out of my league. He humbly tried to deflect the compliment, but she kept praising him. He was clearly enjoying the attention from my beautiful sister. Why would someone as wonderful as you choose my sister? She exclaimed. He explained. I respect your sister's dedication to her work. Being with her makes me feel at ease. Oh, Levi. I was touched by his words, but Tracy seemed unimpressed, saying, Huh. After that meeting, we got married and moved into our new apartment. A few days after our move, Tracy suddenly showed up one night. Oh, hi, Tracy. What a surprise. What brings you here tonight? Hey, sis. I brought your housewarming gift. I was hesitant to let her in, but Levi encouraged me to welcome her. Reluctantly, I did. And this is for you. Tracy brought snacks and beer as a housewarming gift. Dropping by unannounced with such items seemed inconsiderate. Before I could express my thoughts, she cheerfully started talking to Levi. Good evening, Levi. I just wanted to see your handsome face. Aw, shucks. You always say the nicest things. Please, have a seat. Levi happily entertained her. I swallowed what I wanted to say and just kept quiet. Tracy began drinking the beer she brought, and soon both she and Levi were drinking together with me joining them reluctantly. After about two hours, Tracy was visibly drunk. Ugh, see, I told you not to drink too much. I sighed, looking at her slumped over on the couch. Levi defended her. She was just happy to see you. Let it go. Exasperated, I said, Well, I guess I'll call an Uber and take her home. But Levi offered to take her instead. No need. You have work early tomorrow. I'll take care of it. I was grateful for his help since I had work to prepare for. Thanks. Please take good care of her. I said as he helped Tracy out the door. Levi returned an hour later, longer than the 15-minute ride should have taken. Well, you took your time, I casually remarked. He seemed momentarily flustered, but quickly explained, The driver got lost, but I made sure she got home safely. I'm really sorry for the trouble she caused today. I apologized. It's okay. I'm going to bed. Good night. Levi replied, ending our day. At that time, I thanked him without any suspicion. Since then, Tracy started coming to our house frequently. Whenever she showed up, she would ignore me and just talk and drink with Levi before leaving. Initially, there was some awkwardness between them, but they soon became as close as friends. Listen, Levi, my fiancé is too busy to pay attention to me, Tracy said. At that time, she was engaged to a businessman 15 years her senior, introduced by our father. Levi responded, That's terrible. If I was your fiancé, I would be all over you. Aww, you're so sweet. She flirted. Irritated by their conversation, I suggested, Tracy, isn't it time you head at home? She then smirked and teased. Ooh, look at your scary face. You're just jealous. Levi chided me. Don't be so uptight, Tina. She's your baby sister, right? 
Their behavior increasingly frustrated me. Around that time, Levi's work began to get busier. He suddenly had more overtime and started working on weekends too. After days like these, he told me, "Tina, my company might go under." He explained that his company had been struggling for a long time and that salary cuts had been announced. There's no future this way. I need to think about changing jobs," he said. "Right, I'll support you. So let's do our best job hunting." I encouraged him. And then he asked, "Could I maybe get a job at your dad's company?" What? I was taken aback. However, I eventually agreed to at least talk to my father about it. When I discussed it with my father, he said. We've been short on salespeople, so this could work out. He'll be on probation for the first six months, but if that's okay, he should come work for us. I thanked him. Thus, Levi started working at my father's company. Tracy and my husband ended up working for the same company, though in different departments. She continued to come over and talk mostly with them about things at work I knew nothing about. Then came our first wedding anniversary. We had planned to go on a date. However, as we were leaving, he said, "You know, Tracy wants to go furniture shopping today, so I'll go with her." Excuse me? What about our anniversary date? I was astonished. Your sister is more important than our anniversary, right? Let's do it some other time. He suggested prioritizing my sister over me. I did not like this at all. Around that time, I received an email from a friend back home that left me shocked. No way, that couldn't be. And so I made a certain vow. A few days later, Tracy visited our house again. Hey, about that manager? Yeah, I heard. There's also this rumor. He was apparently. My sister and husband were getting excited over such conversations. After a while, Tracy said again, "We really click, Levi. I have so much fun talking to you." Levi responded, "I have a blast talking to you too." Then glancing at me, Levi said, "I wish I had married Tracy, given how well we get along." Tracy smirked at me and said. Stop it! You're gonna make my sister feel bad. That was the last straw for me. I couldn't forgive my husband for prioritizing her over me and making such a remark. I also couldn't forgive my sister. I calmly stated, "Then let's get a divorce." What? They were stunned by my words. You want to marry Tracy, right? Then let's get a divorce so you can marry her. They seemed a bit panicked by my suggestion. C- come on, you're joking, right? What are you talking about? Yes,、yeah, sis. Besides, I have a fiance. Don't take it seriously. Tracy added. Enough of that. Let's talk this Sunday with Dad present. I'm leaving. I said, and left them with my already packed bags. Later, I moved into a weekly apartment and talked to my father, who was surprised but agreed to attend the discussion. Five days later, on Sunday, I went to my former home with them. Levi was there, and Tracy arrived later. They sat down together, and my father and I faced them. Damn, I mean, boss, I'm sorry for involving you in this. Levi began. What do you mean by this? My father inquired. Well, it's about the stupid spat between Tina and me, or something like that. I interjected. A stupid spat? What are you talking about? We're here to discuss a divorce. I'm telling you, you're making a big deal out of nothing. I don't know what you've misunderstood, but Tracy and I are just in-laws. You're crazy to want a divorce over jealousy," he condescendingly explained. 
I lost my patience. Just in loss, huh? Can you still say that after this? I spread out printed papers on the table. What's this? Tracy panicked. This is your private socials account you only showed to close friends, right, Tracy? A friend from back home took screenshots and showed me. I told her calmly. No way. Shall I read it for you? Skipped work to go on a date. Seems he prefers me over his ugly wife. LOL. Pathetic wife got her husband stolen by me right after their wedding. LOL. I'll play with him until I get married. LOL. Oh, and look, there's even a photo of you two in bed together. I reveal the evidence of Tracy and my husband's relationship. Levi turned pale and insisted. No, this is all her doing. I have no feelings for her. This photo is fake. Oh, really? Then I wonder what's recorded on this. I brought out a hidden camera from the bedroom. What? You had a camera in the bedroom? Yeah, I could remotely check in real time. I know what you two did in this house the day I said I was leaving. Shall I play it for you? Levi was at a loss for words. My sister was also quiet. So you and I are getting a divorce. I'll be asking for $50,000 in alimony from each of you. Alimony? You can't do that to me. I'm about to get married. She shrieked. I coolly informed her. You think you can still get married? What? My father continued. I've already told your fiancé about the situation and apologized. It's regrettable that I introduced you to him and wasted his time. Dad, what have you done? She exclaimed. You have no right to say anything. Your fiancé is not only calling off the engagement, but also demanding alimony. You'll pay that yourself. But Dad, you're cruel. I'm cruel? To think cheating with your sister's husband while being engaged. I didn't realize you were this low. Tracy, your mother and I are cutting ties with you. And of course, you're fired from the company. He declared. Uh, no! Her face went ashen. Then Levi interjected. Dan, you're not going to fire me, right? Are you serious? Are you freaking out of your mind? I've heard complaints from the floor. You haven't learned your job and go around acting all high and mighty saying, my wife is the boss's daughter. Did you really think we'd keep an employee with such a disrespectful attitude even during probation? Um, well, that's, uh... You're fired effective immediately. As both a CEO and a father, I cannot forgive you. My father stated firmly. Levi collapsed on the spot at my father's words. Seeing his pathetic state, I said, This is all the result of your own actions, you traitor. I'll be taking that alimony, so be prepared, both of you. And with that, my father kicked them out of the house. Following that, my divorce from Levi was finalized. My father hired a lawyer, and we were able to secure a significantly higher settlement and alimony than usual. Levi called me numerous times, saying, Tracy and I have broken up. Please, let's start over. But I blocked his number. Eventually, he lost his job, savings, and family, and now he's desperately job hunting while living in a shabby apartment. Tracy, too, was faced with alimony claims from both her fiancé and me. With no savings and cut off by her parents, she ended up in debt and is now working in the nightlife. Hearing this, I feel no sympathy at all. It's a fitting end for both of them. As for me, I moved and started a new life focusing on my career. Two years after the divorce, a sincere male colleague confessed his feelings to me. Now, I'm in a relationship with them, looking forward to the future. I want to move forward and carve out my own life. 
My husband looks down on me for being a useless housewife, so I get a divorce from him and move out. But actually... You don't even work and can't even do your housework properly? I'm disappointed that I have a wife like you who is nothing but a scumbag. My husband won't stop spouting off nonsense and hating on me. His outbursts are happening on the daily now. I've heard so many hurtful words that I've become numb to it. But I'm a human too, and my heart is definitely hurting. I've been putting up with it for ages, but I can't take it anymore. I was able to calmly say this to my husband, which was unexpected. I'm done. Let's call it quits and get divorced. For a second, my husband was taken aback, but then he just smirked and gave me a sly grin. He signaled at me, then gave me a quick scan and brushed me off with these words. Bring it on. You'll be in deep trouble once we get divorced, since you're just a housewife. I almost burst into laughter when he made that disrespectful and misunderstood remark. He still doesn't seem to realize what kind of fate awaits him if he divorces me. My name is Nancy Kerr. I am 29 years old. I got married three years ago, and now I am a housewife, supporting my husband, Jason. Jason and I got married after dating for a year and a half. He moved into the apartment I was living in, and we started living together. I was drawn to his macho side. It always overshadowed my hesitant and timid side, even though he could be a bit overpowering at times. When he proposed to me, he said, You can count on me to be there for you, Nancy. I've got your back. I'll handle what you count and make up for what you're missing. Are you sure you want to be with me? What are you talking about? Nancy, you're the first girl I've ever wanted to tie the knot with. Jason. Okay, thank you. Jason, I also want us to be a family together. Oh, I'm really glad. Hey, from now on, we're more than just a couple. We're family now, okay? We'll always be together. His cheeks were a little flushed from laughing, but he had a big smile on his face. I remember that he smiled and I smiled too. But when did things start to fall apart? When did things start to go downhill in our marriage? Looking back, I think it all started when I became a housewife. I never planned on quitting my job for good, but my husband asked me to step down when we got married. To be honest, my job was pretty substantial, and I made way more money than my parents ever did. I was disappointed about quitting, but he asked me to be a stay-at-home wife, so I just went with what he wanted. I was debating whether to keep my job for the perks and savings, but Jason wants me to stay at home, so I guess that's what I should do, right? Plus, Jason's always had my back whenever I've had issues. From the start of our relationship, Jason's been the one to make decisions for us since I can't make up my mind. Being around him has made me think he's always right about everything. So, I happily agreed to be a full-time homemaker at his request. But from then on, things began to change and go against my idea of a perfect family. Day after day, my husband's been getting more and more demanding as I take care of the house. Hey, what kind of dinner is this? You think it'll fill me up after a long day? It all went down because of this situation. One day, two months after we got married, my husband came home from work and saw the dinner I had prepared. There was nothing much different from what he usually eats. But I guess he wasn't in a good mood that day. I unintentionally said back to Jason, I don't think it's any different from usual. And I think it struck a nerve in him. My husband just chucked his bag and went off on me with a nasty attitude. Whoa, seriously? You can't talk to me like that. I've been working from morning till night. Uh-huh. What's wrong? You don't have to yell at me so suddenly. Now see, you're just at home. So you should do your chores better. You're a housewife, and you have time all day long. Why can't you even do these simple things? What do you mean? I prepared the meal the same way I always do, didn't I? Don't get so mad at me. 
Why am I the only one who has to deal with stress when I get back home? Enough. I can't handle this, so I'm just gonna go out and eat. My husband took only his wallet and phone and left the house. I couldn't even process with everything that was going on. Was I really that terrible as his wife? He didn't have to be so angry over the dinner. I could have made other dishes. Ever since that day, my husband's behavior has been getting worse and worse. He's acting like I'm his personal servant now. He doesn't even bother saying my name and just yells out, Hey, or you, when he needs something. Still, I believed in my husband, because I loved him. I assumed this was the only time he'd be treating me so harshly, but I had faith that once things calmed down, he'd go back to being the gentle man I love. But I was just being naive. It's been three years since we tied the knot, and my husband's attitude is just getting worse and worse. So much has gone down in these past three years. First, my husband's been tightening the purse strings on my living expenses. He claims that his salary has gone down due to the company's poor performance. We barely had enough money to cover our basic living expenses, and if we were to cut them down even more, we wouldn't be able to survive. With everything getting more expensive, I had to tap into my single life savings to make up for the difference. But turns out, my husband's salary didn't go down because of the company's poor performance. I believed my husband, but he was actually lying to me. While I was cleaning my husband's room one day, I found his pay stub and saw that his salary went up. It's possible he wasn't telling the truth so he could keep more money for himself. When I learned this, I was more disappointed than mad. Then it crossed my mind that I better start putting money aside so I can divorce my husband if anything happens. Since my husband would find out if I went out to work, I decided to look for a job that I could do at home on my computer. For the first few months, I earned only about $100, but now, a year later, I am earning quite a bit of money every month. To start with, my husband is not my sole provider as I have additional income from stocks that were bequeathed to me by my father. Therefore, no matter how much I earn from home, my husband will never find out. At one point, my savings were going down, but now they're doing much better. I have enough savings to live on even if we get divorced. Every day, my husband keeps being a total jerk to me but I'm getting ready to divorce his sorry butt. You don't even work and can't even do the housework properly? I'm disappointed that I have a wife like you who is nothing but a scumbag. Before, as his housewife, I couldn't handle my husband's verbal abuse. Now that I've got things figured out, his outbursts don't affect me as much. But I was completely clueless. Because recently it hit me that my problems weren't going to be resolved anytime soon. When I woke up in the morning, my husband was asleep in his suit in the living room. He has been coming home late for the past few months, and we hardly see each other at night. As I was about to pick up the socks he had taken off, I noticed my husband's phone that had fallen under the couch. Normally, I wouldn't be particularly bothered by this, but for some reason I felt strangely uncomfortable on this particular day, and I couldn't help but pick up the phone. I placed my husband's fingers on the phone as he slept soundly, and unlocked it with fingerprint recognition. Then, a message with a certain person appeared on the screen. Huh? What's this? It was a message sent from Eileen and from the content, it seems that she is my husband's mistress. Perhaps my husband fell asleep while texting her. At the end of the message, Eileen wrote, Have you fallen asleep? Good night! I love you! And other lovey-dovey messages. I hurriedly moved to another room and began looking for evidence of the affair on my husband's phone. There were tons of messages left with his mistress, but it looks like that doesn't count as solid proof. There are endless ways to make fake texts these days, like through spoofing and forgery. So basically, it's hard to use them as proof. That's why I went ahead and got a private investigator to gather some trustworthy evidence. 
I told the person in charge of the case about the situation and asked him to start the investigation immediately. During the investigation, I must not let my husband find out about it. He was his usual rude self, cursing at me, and I almost blurted out about how I knew about his affair, but I decided to keep it to myself. When I went to the private investigator a month after, he had all the evidence of the affair. A mountain of photos laid out in front of me showed my husband alone with Eileen, the woman he had cheated on me with. I wasn't shocked. Just furious and wanting to get back at them for how they disrespected me. I was steaming mad that he had the nerve to be abusive and arrogant, even though he was the one cheating on me. He decreased our living expenses for his mistress. I will never let it end like this. I will put him through hell. I went home with the evidence and waited for my husband to come home so I could talk to him. A few hours later, after midnight, he finally came home. Just as I was about to broach the subject, Jason looked around the room and sighed heavily. <sighs> what a messy room. Ugh, what have you been doing all day? I was just at home. Then you should at least clean the rooms properly. Look, there's a hair on the floor right by your feet. Isn't it normal for hair to fall out when you live in a house? Quit yelling at me over little things. My husband was steaming mad because I stood my ground and talked back to him harder than usual. He roughly grabbed me and started yelling without any mercy. What's with all the excuses? Who do you think provides for your needs, huh? I could say the same thing to you, right? I'm taking care of the house, too. Huh? I don't want to hear that from you who just lays around at home all day. That's it. I'm at my breaking point. I can't take it anymore. What did you just say? I shook off my husband's hand that was clutching my chest and glared at him. Before I knew it, I was talking to my husband in a calm and collected manner. I'm done. Let's call it quits and get divorced. For a second, my husband was taken aback, but then he just smirked and gave me a sly grin. He signaled at me, then gave me a quick scan and brushed me off with these words. And bring it on. You'll be in deep trouble once we get divorced since you're just a housewife. I almost burst into laughter when he made that disrespectful and misunderstood remark. He still doesn't seem to realize what kind of fate awaits him if he divorces me. So the next day, my husband picked up the divorce papers, not really thinking I'd actually go through with it, and then sarcastically handed me the completed form. But this is just perfect for me. As soon as I filed the papers, we could get divorced immediately. The next day, while my husband was at work, I started packing and went to a real estate agency to rent a new apartment. I quickly found a new place to live in and quickly made preparations so that my husband would not find out about it. Fortunately, I found an apartment that I could move into right away, so I prepared to move out while my husband was away from home. Then, without telling Jason anything, I filed the divorce papers and left the house. After a while, he noticed that I was not at home, and he sent me some messages like, Where are you? I'll let it slide if you just come back here. But I ignored the messages since my plan was already done. Two weeks later, when I thought it was about time, I received a phone call from Jason as expected. Trying not to burst out laughing at his normal antics, I still managed to answer the phone and kept my cool. Hello? Hey, what were you thinking? <laughs> what are you talking about? Don't play dumb. What's this content certified letter about? When did you even... I didn't hear any of this, did I? Yes, my plan was to thoroughly put Jason and his mistress Eileen through hell. After obtaining proof of my husband's affair through a private investigator, I retained a lawyer's office and sent a certified letter to both him and his mistress requesting alimony payments. Jason probably assumed my leaving was a spur-of-the-moment decision and that I would eventually come back. It was clear that he couldn't hide his astonishment when he discovered that we were divorced. His affair was uncovered and I had requested alimony from both of them. His face was red with frustration as he shouted, Just come home already. 
and I couldn't hold back my laughter. It finally dawned on him. What a fool. I confronted my ex-husband with the reality of the situation. Listen, there's more to it, all right? Wh what do you mean? Wow, you still haven't noticed. That apartment you're living in, it's in my name. Oh no. Did you forget that you moved into my apartment? By the way, I've already canceled the lease. You'll need to move out by the end of the month, so make sure you do that. C come on, wait a minute. There's only a week left of this month, right? What do you want me to do? What, if I don't move, are you going to throw me out? I'm not sure, but probably. Why don't you just go to your mistress's house? You can just go over there and have fun, right? Oh, yeah, but you can't. She's married too, right? Turns out, his mistress was also married. Of course, I sent a content-certified letter to Eileen's place, so her husband must have already found out about it. My revenge against them has just begun. But, but there's no way. You're just a housewife, and there's no way you can make ends meet even if we get divorced. I calmly told my husband so he'd fully understand the situation now. Oh, you didn't know? I originally had income from stock inherited from my father. And I was also working from home without telling you. Thanks to that, I have a lot of money for the divorce. Oh no, forgive me, please, Nancy. It all happened in an impulse, you see. Jason, who had found out about my actual situation, begged me in a trembling voice as if he was about to cry at any moment. But I have no intention of forgiving him now. The pain I have suffered is nothing like this. I said clearly in a voice as cold as ever. <laughs> forgive you? What are you saying now? You can't just ask for help without apologizing for all the pain you caused me. That's not right. It was a good thing I divorced you. And I can't believe that the person you cheated on me with was also married. Uh, I'm sorry for cheating on you and for everything I did and for my attitude. And I promise it won't happen again. So please, please forgive me. I don't have the money to pay alimony and she has a family too. So will you... You've got to be kidding me. You're the one who ruined our marriage in the first place, aren't you? Quit speaking whatever's easy for you. I have no intention of forgiving you. Go crawl in the depths of hell with your stupid mistress. I shouted as I said this and hung up the phone. After that, I received dozens of phone calls and messages, but I never responded to any of them. I heard that my ex-husband and his mistress later broke up easily. I heard that his mistress had no intention of leaving her actual husband, because Jason was just for fun and it was all a game for her. She was just playing around with Jason and making him pay for whatever she wanted. She was just taking advantage of the fact that he seemed to be interested in her. When Eileen's husband found out that both Jason and Eileen worked at the same company, he reported the incident to their company. My ex-husband and Eileen were each demoted and sent to different remote places. He had to pay alimony to me, his salary was reduced, and he was demoted to someplace else. His future will be very difficult. I, on the other hand, was to return to my former company. A good colleague of mine talked me into it, and my boss agreed. I am now living a fulfilling life without any inconvenience. To be honest, I am much happier than when I was married. From now on, I hope to spend peaceful days for my own happiness. Thank you for watching until the end. Please subscribe to our channel. See you in the next video. My cold husband turned caring during my pregnancy, offering me morning sickness tea. After drinking, I was rushed to the hospital, and the doctor was stunned. My husband, who I thought was a kind man, underwent a complete change after marriage. Despite both of us working, all the housework was pushed onto me while he started idling away his time with leisure activities. Just as I began to contemplate divorce, I found out I was pregnant. I thought he wouldn't be happy. To my surprise, he was delighted about my pregnancy. 
From then on, my husband seemed like a changed person and started treating me kindly. Got some tea that's good for morning sickness. Try it. Gratefully, accepting the tea offered, I took a sip. Instantly, I felt nauseous. Afterwards, I was rushed to the hospital and the situation made the doctor tremble. My name is Emily Watson, and I'm 31 years old. I work hard every day as an office worker. I have been married to my husband Liam, who is a chef for almost three years now. I met Liam at a pub where I went with friends. He also came with his friends, and that's when he hit on me. I was drawn to Liam, a bright, charming, and handsome guy. I was interested in his profession as a chef and wanted to hear more about it from him. Recently, it's become common for husbands to help with household chores, despite both partners working. However, according to stories from my married friends, there are still quite a few men who believe housework is a woman's job. On that note, if he were a chef, he could easily cook at home without a fuss. Somewhere deep in my heart, I held on to such naive expectations. Liam and I started dating as we bonded over conversations about our shared hobby of gaming. During our courtship, we got along well without any fights. And one year later, we got married. I was supposed to be filled with happiness, but marriage didn't turn out the way I expected. Despite being a chef, Liam never cooked at home. Furthermore, despite both of us working, he didn't help with household chores at all. He left all the household chores to me while he indulged himself in leisure activities. Even after coming home from work, he just lounged on the sofa, absorbed in gaming. On weekends, he'd head out alone in the morning for some fun, sometimes not returning until late at night. Whenever I asked him to help with chores, he'd complain and refuse. I don't want to do chores when I get home. It feels like I'm just continuing work and I hate it. I left the housework to you, Emily, so please just handle it somehow. Isn't housework the wife's job? Upon hearing that, I was appalled. Don't just pass everything off to others. Are you planning to make me do all the housework despite both of us working? Thinking that housework is for women is such an outdated notion. You should pitch in too. It's not funny to have household chores pushed onto me when we're both working. If that were to happen, it would be a one-sided burden on me. Liam then took offense to my comment and said the worst thing he could have said. What? Don't mess with me. Why do you think someone like me, a popular and handsome guy, would marry someone like you, a plain Jane? What do you mean? Because you seemed quiet and obedient. I married you because you seemed like you'd listen to me. Know your place. There's no way someone would willingly marry a plain-looking person like you. Liam's outrageous remarks left me speechless. Was his kindness before marriage just a way to use me? Did he suddenly change after we got married because he saw me as his personal servant? I couldn't help but feel resentful towards my past self for marrying him without realizing his true nature. But that's not all. After marriage, it became clear that Liam is moody and loves to have fun. He helps out with chores only occasionally when he's in a good mood. However, when he's upset about something at work, he takes it out on me with sarcasm and criticism. On top of that, Liam spends his salary on gambling and drinking instead of contributing to the household. When I complain about it, he explodes, throwing things or even raising his fist. I was tired of married life being so far from what I imagined. Feeling troubled, I decided to confide in my best friend Natalie about Liam. Natalie is a vibrant beauty who attracts attention from various men. She attended my wedding and knows Liam. I hoped she could give me some good advice. But things didn't turn out as I expected. <sighs> men are all the same, you know. Natalie said with a sigh. The world is full of men who 
don't feed the fish they catch. So, I've decided not to marry. Everyone is nice only during the courtship period. Natalie uttered with a sigh. With her extensive experience dating various men, her words held weight. After discussing with Natalie extensively, I still couldn't find a solution. Yet, I persisted. I'm just so tired. Every time Liam gets irritated, he yells at me or throws things. Do I have to keep enduring this forever? In response to my complaint, Natalie has a troubled expression on her face. Hmm, <sighs> that's the only option, isn't it? Liam puts up a good front, and even if you talk to others, they won't understand. If things go wrong, you, Emily, might end up being blamed. Even if you want a divorce, it'll be troublesome if he throws a fit. Upon hearing Natalie's words, I felt disappointed. Even though I had just gotten married, I was already disillusioned with Liam. I didn't want to spend the rest of my life as his servant. Even though I thought so, I could not go through with a divorce because I was concerned about appearances. Even after three years of marriage, Liam's domineering attitude remained unchanged. He continued to do as he pleased, leaving all the burdensome tasks to me. I've had enough. I'm divorcing Liam. Even if it means dividing our assets, it's better than living in this hellish existence. I'll take whatever settlement I can get. Having made up my mind, a troubling situation arose. As my health continued to deteriorate, I went to the hospital and to my surprise, it was revealed that I was pregnant. While it should have been a cause for celebration, I felt despondent. Of all times, why did I have to get pregnant right when I decided to divorce? If I give birth, I'll have to take time off and neglect household chores. In such a scenario, Liam is likely to shower me with insults. Yet, I can't bring myself to pretend this child doesn't exist. After much deliberation, I decided to inform Liam about the pregnancy. It would be troublesome if I quietly divorced him and it became a problem later. When I told him about the pregnancy, Liam froze for a moment. He might suddenly start shouting at me. I braced myself, wary of his reaction. However, Liam responded in a surprising way. Pregnant? Is it true? To my surprise, Liam was smiling and happy. I was taken aback by his reaction, which was different from what I expected. Ignoring my bewilderment, Liam starts talking to me. We've been married for three years without a child, so I thought you were infertile, Emily. It's great news if we're having a baby. Well, I wonder if it'll be a boy or a girl. Exciting. Are you happy about this? I might have to take time off work and won't be able to do much around the house. That's to be expected. Since you're pregnant, you shouldn't overexert yourself. I'll take care of both work and house chores, so take care of yourself. After that, Liam suddenly became kinder, like a different person. He started contributing money to the household and took over my chores. Even when I wasn't feeling well due to morning sickness, he took good care of me, never going out. When I was suffering from morning sickness, Liam would gently remind me not to overexert myself. Not only that, well, I bought some ginger tea for your morning sickness. It helps with hydration too, killing two birds with one stone. Saying so, he handed me the tea. Thank you. That's thoughtful of you. Don't mention it. Taking care of a pregnant wife is a husband's duty. Liam smiles as he says this. Perhaps when the baby is born, Liam will return to his former kind self. I hoped that this would also repair our relationship. I had such expectations, unaware of his true intentions. The tea he gave me had a faint scent of herbs and tasted delicious. This tastes like black tea. It's really delicious. Right. It's nutritious, so drink plenty. Even though I was suffering from morning sickness, I drank that tea multiple times a day. I was grateful for Liam's kindness. Then, a week later, a serious situation occurred. That morning, I was feeling nauseous from morning sickness. To settle my stomach, I drank the tea Liam had given me. 
However, immediately after drinking it, I experienced stomach pains and felt unwell. My vision started to blur and I felt chills, unable to stop sweating. At that moment, Liam was getting ready to leave for work. Gasping for breath, I pleaded for his help. Oh, you... I'm not feeling well. Liam looked at me, his eyes widening for a moment, and with an odd smile, he said, Morning sickness, right? There's no need to go to the hospital for something like that. Just rest, and you'll be fine. But I really feel sick. It's just in your head. Anyway, I'll be late for work. Saying so, Liam left. As time passed, my condition worsened and I began to lose consciousness. This was bad. Thinking so, I managed to call my mother who lived nearby. I had waited until the last minute but couldn't bear it anymore and collapsed in front of the door. Just before losing consciousness, I thought I heard my mother's voice. When I came to, I was lying on a hospital bed. My mother was sitting beside me, looking at me with concern. Emily, oh, I'm glad you're awake. You were rushed to the emergency room. According to my mother, she found me collapsed at the entrance and immediately called an ambulance to take me to the hospital. When the paramedics asked her what I had eaten, my mother found the tea on the table and took it with her to the hospital. She said she was shocked when she saw the tea. After hearing the shocking truth from my mother, I felt like I was going to faint from the shock. Then, I realized something. I had suspected for a long time that Liam, a womanizer, might be cheating on me. Liam often secretly used the computer when I wasn't around. I knew the password because I had peeked at it before. Everything should be revealed once I see what's on that computer. I asked my mother for a favor to solve the problem that had befallen me. Mom, I need your help. Bring the computer at home. My mother agreed and went back to my place to retrieve the computer. When I saw it, I felt my whole body heat up with anger. Oh, I see. So that's how it is. I won't forgive this. I devised a plan and got my mother to cooperate. First, I had my mother call Liam on speakerphone. Hello, Liam. Is now a good time? There's something I need to talk to you about. Oh, Mom. Yeah, everything's fine. What's up? Emily and the baby. They... <laughs> they're gone. Please come to the hospital near the station right away. My mother pleaded with Liam while pretending to cry. Liam replied, I'll come right away. A few minutes later, Liam rushed to the hospital. He seemed unable to contain his smile, but he froze instantly upon seeing me sitting up in bed. Oh my, you're here. That was quick, wasn't it? Uh, Emily? You're alive? But mom said you had gone. Hello, Liam. Both I and the baby are fine. Is that so? I was worried. I'm glad you're safe. Though Liam said this, he was clearly disappointed. Just then, my mother entered the hospital room. Liam looked at my mother and began to grumble and complain. Mom, Emily seems perfectly fine, doesn't she? Please don't say things like gone, it's not auspicious. Even if it's meant as a joke, it's in poor taste. My mother looked at the fussing Liam with cold eyes and told him something. It's not a lie. Your wife told me that she and the child will be gone after the divorce. Huh? Liam was puzzled by my mother's words. I decided to add further pressure on him. You made me drink poisoned tea, didn't you? Liam froze at my words. Actually, the tea Liam gave me contained harmful ingredients for pregnant women. The ingredients cause the uterus to contract, putting mother and fetus at risk when taken in large doses. When I checked the tea's sales website, it stated in the precautions, do not drink if you are pregnant. I turned to Liam, who was blue as a sheet. You tried to kill me and my child. At those words, Liam became agitated and attempted to divert the conversation. Wait a minute. I didn't know that tea could be harmful. I only bought it because I heard it was good for morning sickness. Are you trying to paint me as the bad guy without any evidence? Liam argued back, growing defensive. I had anticipated it, but he wasn't going to admit it easily. 
If he's going to be like that, then I'll fight back just as fiercely. I presented the data from the computer my mother brought to Liam. Liam looked puzzled, but when he checked the contents of the data on the computer, he instantly turned pale. The computer data contained emails exchanged between Liam and his affair partner. In those emails, Liam and his affair partner discussed targeting me and my unborn child. Actually, Liam and I had taken out life insurance on each other when we got married, just in case something happened. Liam and his affair partner were targeting that. There were other shocking revelations too. Believe it or not, Liam's affair partner turned out to be my own best friend, Natalie. Apparently, Natalie got close to Liam after our wedding, and she had been secretly having a relationship with him behind my back for a year. While cheating on me with Liam, Natalie calmly listened to my concerns. The emails even exposed this, revealing how they mocked me together. It's infuriating. I was truly foolish to think of that despicable woman as my best friend. Liam hastily grabbed the computer from his mother and attempted to delete the emails to cover up the evidence. Seeing his pathetic actions, I couldn't help but laugh. It's useless to do that. I've already copied the evidence emails and sent them to our relatives. Your actions have long been seen through. Liam's expression turned even worse at my words. He glanced around nervously, then suddenly slumped into a chair beside me. Please, forgive me. Please don't tell the police. I was just coerced by someone threatening my child. I only love you, Emily. I swear I'll never do something like this again. I was appalled by Liam's attempt to shift blame onto Natalie afterward. Does he seriously believe that saying such things will make me forgive him? There's a limit to being foolish. Why did I ever marry a man like him? I should have divorced him without worrying about appearances. I decided to say what I wanted to say in the end. Don't say stupid things. You poisoned me, and now you claim you were tricked? You put me and my baby in danger. Apologies won't erase your sins, will they? Please don't say that. I can't survive if I become a criminal. I couldn't care less about that. You and Natalie are the ones who did something so shameful that you can't show your faces in public, right? I filed a report with the police and I'm divorcing you too. Don't you ever come near me again. Upon hearing the commotion, the nurses quickly gathered around. To add to the chaos, the police were also there. It turned out the hospital had reported a case of a pregnant woman being poisoned. Liam was taken away sobbing and yelling. Natalie, who was also an accomplice, was later caught, and they were all found guilty together. Later on, I sought the help of a lawyer to divorce Liam. Of course, I didn't forget to claim compensation and child support from him. His parents paid everything up front, with the agreement that Liam would repay them once he was out of prison. I also demanded compensation from Natalie, which she paid from her savings. She was left penniless, disowned by her parents, and disappeared. On the other hand, I safely gave birth to my daughter and returned to my parents' home. Though she's the child of my detestable ex-husband, my daughter is innocent. Now, with the help of my parents, I'm raising my daughter with great care. I've become a single mother, but I have my parents as strong allies. I'm determined to do my best for my daughter's sake from now on.